YouTubers, it going the Godows is back after day two of the NFL draft, highlighting some of the best, most interesting, and questionable picks at the end. We'll talk about the biggest winners of the entire day two. We won't get the chance to talk about every single pick of day two in this video, but I gave my thoughts on every single pick on our Twitter today. Uh, we'll be doing something similar for day three as well. So links been in the comments, anything you're looking for, check out our videos. Uh, so the best picks of round two, we, we will get to round three. Don't worry. Uh, Johnny Newton, a lot of us thought he was a, a first round player, the defensive tackle from Illinois. The commanders get him at 36. Um, the interesting part is, you know, how much is he going to play right away? Because they're, they already got some studs on the interior. Uh, but they still get a, you know, maybe best player available on their board, a big time player. Yeah, I mean, are there's probably going to be times where they put John, they slide Jonathan Allen a little bit outside, and they use all three of those interior interior guys. So I'm curious to see it. Um, Tavondre Sweat, if you guys have been watching me, I, I was a huge Tavondre Sweat fan. I actually had a first round grade on him, um, and I was actually going to rank him ahead of Johnny Newton, but character concerns were popping up, and then you know he got arrested. So. Not the smartest guy, obviously, doing that. But And some people thought he would drop a little further, but Titans take him at 38. I think he's such a unique player. You know, he, he creates for his teammates. He has to be double teamed. And, man, pairing him with Jeffrey Simmons is pretty ridiculous up front. And that's a Titans head in mind there. Uh, I mean, you have to double both those guys. Or, or can you double both those guys? Uh, and sweats more than just a nose tackle. Texas used him in many different ways than that. Um, he actually can move uh, for how big he is too. So it's just a guy I was really high on. And, you know, just thinking about him and Jeffrey Simmons in there, man, I, I love that. Uh, Eagles do have to trade away some value, but they go up and get Cooper DeGene. And I was excited about this one too because I'm thinking I maybe it was on to something. I ranked him with the safeties, and I said you got to use him in multiple ways. Use him at safety, use him at nickel. And then you can use him at corner as well. But based on his strengths and weaknesses, he is more inside the hashes. It, you know, it would be more ideal for him. And the Eagles have a number of corners on their team. They drafted a big-time corner last night in Quinion Mitchell. Uh, so I think I was a little on to something here with Cooper DeGene. Um, you know, so Vic Fangio been running a lot more zone lately. DeGene is zone guy. So they get a first-round talent player. But I only thought he was a first-round talent. If you use them the way I want them to use, it, want you to use them. If you're gonna put them just strictly outside, you know I wasn't really in love with that. So I, I'm thinking I'm happy with the Eagles here doing this. They, they do trade some value up to 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 go get them. Same with the Saints, trade a little bit, uh, but they get a first round player. Kool Aid McKintree's been a star since high school. Very consistent, very smart. Uh, I said you know he can play any coverage, but I liked him specifically in cover two scheme. Uh, the Saints run two-man under, so it's not really the same as zone cover two, but it, obviously there's some some similarities there, and I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is a fit uh, in New Orleans. They love their corners. They make sure they get some legit corners. You know, Are they going to move Marshawn Latimer at some point? There were some talks about that, but they get a really solid one here. Max Melton, as you guys know, is one of my favorite players in the draft. Uh, I mocked him to the Cardinals in my day two mock. I love the fit. I think they're going to use him. Outside and inside, as you should. Use him where he's needed most. Love his pressability. Super athletic, super lengthy. He's got so much upside. Big fan of Melton. The Cardinals actually traded back and got Melton. So incredible value here. And that's why I'm highlighting that as one of my favorite picks. And then Adonai Mitchell, obviously. This is this was the highest ranked guy for me going into today. He keeps he drops down just a little bit, drops all the way down to 52. Colts always seem to steal a receiver. And this is a big time receiver you can pair in there at Michael Pittman and Josh Downs and Alec Pierce. I think Mitchell kind of is going to take take reps away from Alec Pierce. I think he's better. Um, you know, some low effort plays. He's diabetic, so he drops a little bit because of that. But man, he ran an NFL route tree. He's got great hands. Games on the line, you can go to him. Um, contested catchability, speed. You know, you rarely see that the length and the speed combination. So I love that. Cole Bishop had that is, or I thought that was a possibility. I've talked about through this process as well. Uh, when the Bills were on the clock, I said it out loud with the people I was watching. I'm like they're going to go Cole Bishop here, and they did. They went Cole Bishop. That was my number two safety. And remember, I have Cooper DeGene as a safety. So using most people's pool of safeties, he was actually my number one. But that's really not how I look at it. But I like Cole Bishop. End of the day, uh, I uh, strong safety that can play free. But I do like him better at strong. Really get up in the box, 
Really good blitzing. The way he plays around the box, it kind of reminds me like a poor man's Harrison Smith. That's pretty high praise. Uh, but really good football player. Mainly zone coverage and the Bills are zone, so I like that. Uh, and then Ennis Rakestraw, we thought was an option for the Lions in the back end of the first round. Most likely we knew he's going to be an early second round pick, but it seemed like a fit for the Lions at the end of the first round because how good he is in the style of play, you know. And the Lions got a cor- my number one corner in the first. They got my number six corner in the second. So really loading up on corner. So through two days, they've only drafted one one position, uh, but they get some good ones, and they don't really have to worry about that position, which was a struggle last year. They have Carlton Davis as well. Uh, Rakestraw was a late first round talent, but he has some durability issues. So rightfully so it knocked him down a little bit, but 61 is incredible value. Look at the Missouri corners are dropping a little bit. Um, because I like Chris Abrams drain a lot as well as well. And he's actually still left, um, going into day three. So we'll see who ends up, who ends up with him intriguing. Ooh, who I think is intriguing. Uh, Keon Coleman was the first pick of the second round. And I did think there was better receivers, but you get a a guy that we thought was a top pick at one point this year, and he gets to pair with Josh Allen. It seems like a really good replacement. They, they They were specifically going for a Gabe Davis replacement, and that's why they were trading back. Uh, that's that's really what they were going for. I think it's a it's a Gabe Davis replacement with more upside here. Coleman's a boomer bust guy. I said he's either going to be a Drake London type player or a Nikhil Harry type player. Um, but chances are with the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen, could his floor be a Gabe Davis type player? So it's looking a little better there. I, I did I like Trey Franklin for for them. He's still sitting around. I know he has some high highs and low lows. So maybe that's the issue, but. Um, and it's a different type of receiver, but it, interesting, interesting pick. And then the Chargers, I really thought they were going Roman Wilson, who ended up dropping. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but they go with a very similar receiver. Most people thought McConkie was a better, a little bit better, but similar. I actually really like Roman Wilson. I like McConkie as well. Uh, but just funny because Harbaugh chooses out of the same style receiver. He doesn't choose his guy. He chooses McConkie. So obviously he thinks he's better, or at least that staff does. Um, but he's going to be super productive with Justin Herbert as long as he's on the field. Some people had uh, durability concerns I, I, you know, with him a little bit, nothing major. Jackson Powers Johnson, the Raiders, really good value pick, really good player, safe pick. Uh, what are they going to do with them, though? You know, because they already have a center, they re-signed, and uh, you know, I thought about I thought Powers Johnson had some upside at guard, so that could kind of be the case here. Edger and Cooper was a really solid pick. Uh, mocked this a ton, so it wasn't like a wow value pick, but really solid pick. Packers needed a linebacker. They actually got a couple, um, including Cooper here. Um, you know, so solid pick. Should make an impact with Green Bay. Jonathan Brooks was my number one running back. He was the first running back taken. Uh, I thought he was clearly the best running back, but because he tore his ACL, his ACL in November, it made it somewhat of a discussion. I like this on the Panthers because not only do they get the best running back, but they actually get better at running back, even though they have Hubbard and they have Sanders. I think Brooks is going to be better. Um, they got a load of weapons for that for Bryce Young in that offense now, but yeah, I just like teams when they're not afraid to get better. You know, like most teams, most front, most front offices will go, you know, well, I guess they don't have ties to those guys, but they'll go like, we got this guy, we got that guy, that's good enough. Like, no, they go find a way to get better here, add more weapons. A um, couple of commanders. Mikey Sainer still, solid pick. Um, this is right around where I thought he would go, that the latest would go to the Steelers. They took him a little bit before that. Uh, but why it's really intriguing, not just because he's a good player, but I kind of view him as a, as, you know, different, but a, in terms of playmaking ability, Deron Bland, uh, but more of a slot version of Deron Bland, just because his instincts and the way he reads the quarterback gets his hands on the ball. And Dan Quinn, Deron Bland, that was his guy. So now he's got, I, I wonder if he's thinking the same thing, but I know one's an outside, one's an inside. And Sainer still can play outside, but I, he's going to play inside for them. So it, it, that playmaker for Dan Quinn. And then Ben Sinnott was my number two tight end from the start. I was high on him from the jump. Uh, I know that was uncommon, at least at the time, and he ends up being the second tight end taken. And I, it's going to be a high-powered passing attack in Washington uh, under Cliff Kingsbury, Jaden Daniels. Sinnott, if there was going to be a Sam Laporta this year, I think it was Sinnott. I think it could be sent out, you know, it's not gonna be that productive. That's tough to do, but I, I, the guy, I think he's make a big impact here for the commanders. So I was a big Senate fan and Marshawn Nealon, very intriguing pick one for Mike Zimmer here. 
we're not done talking about Mike Zimmer, I guess. Uh, but I like Nealon. He was growing on me a lot more and more and more as the process went on. Um, a lot of upside, lot upside, very quick. At the same time, being powerful, the Eastern Michigan game was eye popping. But I wish there was more of that. Um, but they lose Dorrance Armstrong. You know, Demarcus Lawrence not going to be around forever. So kind of a guy to have there, um, opposite of Micah Parsons for the future. Um, so it's an it's an interesting one, and, and there really was a shortage on, especially now going forward, a shortage on uh, pass rushers. So he was the most legit one going into the day. Cowboys Cowboys end up with them. Um, uh, takes it away from the teams that really needed them. So, uh, interesting stuff. Some questionable picks. Uh, the Falcons traded up a lot of value just to go up a few spots and get Rook a row, row, row. I thought he was more an early third. He definitely looks the part. He has a lot of upside. Raheem Morris knows interior defense alignment. I'm sure he can develop him because he needs to develop more of pass rush moves or just more move, even though in the trying to shed blocks in the run game. But he looks the part. A lot of upside. I, just to trade what they traded to go up that early. It does a little much. I do like Jalen Polk. I do like Jalen Polk, you know, so I'm not saying it's a bad pick. Um, I thought there were better receivers. They did trade back. I just thought they were going to get a, somebody a little bit more, like, for Drake, like a, for a sure thing. Like, he's going to come in. He's going to be a starting receiver, really help Drake May. And, and Polk, you know, two years ago was the third best receiver on the team. He was the second best this year. I, I mainly think just because McMillan was injured a little bit. I thought McMillan was better, even though I do like all three of those guys. Uh, and the obviously the best one. Um, but, of course, you know, the Patriots weren't going to take McMillan. It's another slot receiver. They have plenty of those. But, yeah, I was a little surprised about this one. And Chris Braswell, I I was a lot lower on than it seemed like everyone else. So, if you're a Bucks fan, kind of go with everyone else if you want to stay optimistic. But I just didn't see it with him. Um, you know, complete opposite of Dallas Turner for me. I, I thought he was more of a fourth-round pick, Braswell. Uh, just not explosive enough for me. Just not enough juice. But he uh, tested very well. Um, you know, so I know they took him a bit early, the Bucks. I know they needed a pass rusher. It seems, some teams kind of got desperate for pass rushers, but I thought there was still some decent ones uh, available there. Uh, going to round three, the best picks. So not as many like as round two were like, wow, like the best picks. But Christian Haynes, I thought, was a, a round two guard that could start day one. I love the way he moves in, in blocks and space. Uh, and the Seahawks get him in round three, and they definitely could use a guard. And then the, easily the best pick of round three, Roman Wilson, was actually my receiver six. And I really think people are sleeping on him just because he's not like super flashy. Like he does he do anything like anything anywhere close to elite? Like no, but he he gets. I mean, he gets separation at elite level. Like he reads coverages, could sit down and you know find the soft spot in zones. But he gets open. He catches the ball, gets first downs. Like, he does it as consistently as anybody. Like, it's it's a guy that is really going to help your team. And the Steelers really don't have much for a receiver, you know, outside of George Pickens. Um, I mean, they got other guys that can play. But I, Roman Wilson's going to plug right in the slot, which they badly needed. And he's going to grind out first downs. He's going to do that. And, and I just hope the quarterback – because Russell Wilson's on the decline, and Fields' issue is, has been seeing the field like you'd miss open or not seeing open receivers. Um, so I, I just – with him, he, Wilson's going to be open. So I'm kind of hoping – just for Roman Wilson, I think Russell Wilson is kind of the better fit there because I, I think he'll at least see him. Um, and I do think Fields could be better with Sears than he was in the Bears. But, I, like – he is going to play for the Steelers a lot of snaps, and he is going to be open. If the quarterback just sees him, he should, he's going to be sneaky, sneaky productive. Like, it's going to look like a mega steal. Um, Jalen McMillan, I love Jalen McMillan. Uh, two years ago, 2022, he actually, I guess debatable, but actually was the best Washington receiver over Roma Dunze, but I think is a lot better. Uh, this year, he's a little beat up. When he did play, it looked really good. You kind of can get him gadget plays, like screen passes. You can get him like intermediate routes, and then the deep ball as well. He, another guy that's going to play a lot from the slot. Um, he, he's going to separate. The footwork's great. He's going to catch the ball. He's not going to make a ton of contested catches. He's going to catch the ball. Um, you know, so it's another guy to pair in there with the Bucks. They got a they got a long list of receivers there, though. Uh, then Adisa Isaac, I thought could have been a second round pick, so that was a really good pick for the Ravens. They need a pass rusher pretty badly. They got a couple Penn State guys, um, but he's explosive, pretty productive. I I think he has some upside to him too. 
Uh, but easily the best pick of round three was Roman Wilson. Intriguing. Braylon Trice, yeah, before this point, I haven't loved the Falcons draft, but I do like Braylon Trice. I think people were kind of sleeping on him because he isn't insanely explosive. He didn't test. He tested all right. Didn't test, like, super well. He's not, like, the lengthiest guy in the world. But just turn on the tape. Like, the guy gets to the quarterback. He shows up in big moments. He he he, he makes big plays. Like, he's super productive for a reason. So, um and I think that's a good, it just seems like a Raheem Morris pass rusher that the kind of, that they have with the Rams, uh, that like similar to the guys they have with the Rams. So I, and he might come in there and start like he might come in, you know, so it's not like a wow pick. I like Trice maybe a little more than the next guy, not by a whole lot, but he's going to come in there and he's going to play. And I think he'll get production. Jermaine Burton, uh, for the Bengals, very intriguing. Cause I, what the, what the plan is, but I do think as long as he's like, Getting along with everyone's on the field, he's going to be good because he does have character concerns. That's why he was here. Other than that, he's probably a early second. I wouldn't put it past me a late first. Like if everything was kind of clean across the board with the character concerns, there's attitude concerns. Um, because he's got, I'd say Roma Dunze has the best hands in the class. There's other guys you definitely put up there with great hands, but Burton I'd probably put at number two. He's got that good of hands. He's really good on the boundary. He's really good on deep deep balls. He's super athletic. The comebacks are really good along the sideline. But that's where I'm intrigued because the Bengals don't have Tyler Boyd, so they really could use a starting slot receiver unless a guy like Charlie Jones steps up. Uh, and Burton, I think he has the athleticism, the quickness to play there, and you know, especially with Joe Burrow and learning from those receivers, for sure can make that transition. I, I don't think it's much could be easier but at the same time like where he did most of his work was I thought was he did it everywhere but I thought he really went to work on the sideline um so is is he like a future replacement even though he's a totally different receiver uh as T Higgins because it's another outside receiver but you know Jamar Chase is like an everything type of receiver the way he plays on as the X receiver um T Higgins is more of your contested catch guy uh, on the outside downfield, but Burton's more of your speed guy typically on the outside, but he can play in a slot. So honestly, he can fill in the slot right now. If they lose T Higgins, you know, Burton could take more reps, you know, and I'm talking about right, not right now necessarily. I don't think they're going to trade Higgins, but if Higgins is gone, we'll say next year, Burton could take more up his snap reps on the outside again, like he did at Alabama. And again, he was at Georgia too. These are, this is for a reason. Dominic Pooney, just really fun to watch, uh, have moments with him, you know, blocking three guys like literally there was, I remember a specific moment where he actually successfully blocked three guys in one play um you know so he, he's fun like that high motor type guy he was a guard he moved the tackle he actually looked a little, a little better at tackle but you see a lot of upside at guard the 49ers really need both like they could use a starting guard um they possibly could use an upgrade at right tackle I don't think he would start there um, but in, you know, they have some durability concerns really across the offense line. So it's a guy that can either start day one at guard, be a, a future left or right tackle, um, or the future starting guard for a long time. And right now he can fill in at either spot. So that was pretty big for the Niners and the Maris Leofow for Mike Zimmer feels like a Mike Zimmer guy. Leofow, I moved up like this last week in my linebacker board. And I honestly wish I moved him up more now. Um, because he is flashy, and I was kind of remembering the positives. Well, let's remember the positives, why I moved him up, and, and his highs are insanely high, like in the conversation of like, like Edger and Cooper, like in that conversation, like the top linebacker in the class, but his lows are pretty bad. Like he flies around too much where he'll just completely whiff or he'll take himself out of the play, um, but a good defensive coordinator can coach more of that good out of him, you know, and he's – a good athlete, more of an athlete than his testing numbers, which were fine. Um, freaky lengthy, freaky lengthy. So he has a, he's like a boomer buzz guy here in round three. A lot of upside. So I actually like that for Mike Zimmer's defense there. So very intriguing. Uh, and then some questionable picks. Uh, Delmar Glaze from Maryland. I thought it was a tackle that because of the strengths and weaknesses, I thought he's better off sliding in the guard. But the Raiders badly battle leading the right tackle. So they might be forced to use them there so not the worst but I'm not saying these are necessarily bad picks uh, that was a little early for that uh, Blake Corum uh, like a fan favorite super productive I love the vision overall he's good 
Um, I maybe was a little lower on him. I would have been okay in the fourth round him. A little lower than everyone else just, just because the mileage, how long is he going to last. But he just really didn't break tackles. The more you watch, the more you realize it. So how is he going to really do that at the NFL level? Um, and they have Kyron Williams, which I do think it was important to get a solid backup because Kyron has some durability concerns. But uh, that was a little early to do that, and I thought there was better backs. Um, it's an interesting one. And the Packers got themselves a haul, but then maybe the reach – between these next two, and that's actually funny because the best hauls, we're going to talk about that in a second. The best hauls were the Packers and the Commanders on the day. But their last picks feel like uh, in the entire day probably the biggest reaches. They're not the end of the world. But Hopper, man, during the year he kind of stood out, though, like pretty productive, kind of you know making a lot of tackles for, for Mizzou, who had a really good defense. But the more I watched, I was like, yeah, he kind of just flies around and throws his body at guys. Doesn't really use his arms. Doesn't really wrap up as much as I like. So... Um, it's a guy that's going to you know, fly around and just try to hit people. So I, I don't really don't see him starting at linebacker in the NFL. Felt like a special teams pick in, in round three. So I thought that was pretty early. And then Luke McCaffrey, who is pretty consistent. He gets open. He catches the ball. So maybe you don't want to overthink it. Played at Rice. Not the most explosive guy. You know, so I thought it was he was going to be like a good pick in round six or somewhere. You know, maybe, maybe five. Uh, it reminds me a little bit. I definitely think he'll be much, at least I hope, be much better than him. But for Cliff Kingsbury, an Andy Isabella type pick where it was like, yeah, kind of like a, a smaller kid that's a little quick, little shifty, that's getting a lot of hype because type of person he is or who he is. Um, I'm sure it'll be better than him, but it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. So I did think it was a little early. Uh, and then going on, so day two, as a whole, the winners. I think the best single picks that stood out and enough to be, and there's more single picks that I absolutely loved. We talked about it. But the Colts getting A.D. Mitchell, just crazy good, crazy value, crazy steal. Uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers getting Roman Wilson. Uh, these guys are going to be productive right away, and these are just absolute steals. Um, it's my receiver five and receiver six right there. Best hauls, uh, Washington getting... Uh, you know, a number of guys that can contribute right away. We talked about throughout this video and the Packers getting, um, you know, we didn't even talk about uh, Javon Bullard. They had another potential starter, whether it's at safety or in the slot. Um, they get Marshawn Lloyd, who I liked a lot. How much is he going to play right away, though? So, uh, in the commanders, we didn't really talk about Brandon Coleman, who could play tackle or guard. Uh, you know, so the, these, these teams got, they got a lot better. They got a lot of, they got a lot of picks and they, did well with most of their picks, but they're both both their last picks I didn't really love. My least favorite picks on the day. Most efficient, like the most balanced. They both had a one pick in each round. Uh, the Ravens, you know, got a check mark on both their picks with, with Roger Rosengarten, really solid tackle, who's probably going to start for them. And Adisa Isaac, who we talked about, was a really good it was a really good steal, and he'll probably play a lot. And then the Panthers, uh, Ravens and Panthers here, Jonathan Brooks, who I think will be their best running back. He's my number one running back in the class. And then Trevin Wallace, who uh, was on my guys list because I was a little higher on him than everyone else. I thought he should be a third-round pick. Not really many people said that. He went in the third. He's got the upside. He's got the explosiveness, the traits, the athleticism you look for. He, if With the right coaching, he has a chance to be a really, really good linebacker. It's not going to happen right away. So I thought he's a solid third-round pick. Um, so those are like the most efficient, really good drafts. And I picked two champs. I really liked what the Ravens did. I mean, um, I had Rosengarten as a, as a underrated player from the start. I was mocking him in the second. People were giving me shit. But then it kind of people started to see it. Um, he was fun this year. He struggled a little bit against Michigan, but he was really, really good this year. Um, he's going to start at right tackle for the Ravens. It's a good pick, and it's a great pick with Isaac, who could start or play a lot. Uh, and it was a big need at the pass rush position. The Commanders got a great haul. I did not love the McCaffrey pick. Not the end of the world, but they get a steal in Newton, who's going to be a key rotational guy. Um, ben Sinnott's going to make a big impact. Uh, Mikey Sainer still is going to start, make a big impact. Brandon Coleman's going to start for them. He could struggle a little bit at first. His hand placement um, needs to be a little more consistent. Needs to drop it really a little bit. It was too high, um, but I think that could be fixed pretty easily. Um, so they just got a haul of really good players that are going to make an impact and contribute. The commanders should be up here. Like if they weren't up here, that's kind of an issue because they had so many picks. And there's other teams too. I kind of highlighted some of them there. So 
Um, just want you mainly wanted to highlight like what really, really stood out. So, and I'm kind of blocking some words. Apologize about that. But we did the same video for day one. I had I graded every single day one pick as well. We had a bunch of content on the channel. More to come. We're excited about day three. Make sure you follow us on Twitter slash X uh, for pick by pick analysis. Uh, best available players. I'm constantly updating that, so you're missing out if you're not following that. Links pinned in the comments for that. Anything else you're looking for? Sponsors: GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Code Goat. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.